Hello my friends and welcome to something completely different. This is Stainless Steel with the Historical Improvement Project submod, something you're not used to seeing on the channel. I have streamed it in the past a couple times, but I've never really done a proper campaign of it. And I must admit, I was watching Ligist, a fellow, fellow, fellow YouTuber, this intro has already gone completely overboard, but I was watching Ligus, the fellow YouTuber, currently playing this game, this mod as well, and he's playing as the Crusader States, and it just looked like so much fun that I wanted to give it a shot myself. This will be quite different from my normal sort of shtick, which is of course the Divide and Conquer campaigns. Currently, I'm thinking maybe doing an upload of this campaign once, maybe twice, if it proves to be particularly successful. So, you know, likes and comments, always welcome. Uh, and make them a bit longer. So strive for episodes that are somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours long. No intros, but I will keep editing out loading screens, etc, etc. This might be too much for me. I am a veteran when it comes to Divide and Conquer, and I can bumble my way through most campaigns. Stainless Steel is quite a bit more difficult. And the faction I've picked out, just completely on gut feeling, which is the Byzantine Empire, I think might also be the most difficult faction. At the very least, we'll be dealing with both internal and external strife, so it's going to prove to be challenging. So this might very well not end up a successful campaign, but I think that's part of the fun. If I start this campaign, I can immediately tell you this campaign will end with a win. There's no excitement. There's no fun. Sometimes the hero can't win, and this might be the case. I do consider myself the hero in this situation. If you don't know the sub-mod itself, it's a mod from Medieval 2 Total War, in case that wasn't clear, then I am not the right person to tell you all about it, so look it up, Google it. You can find all the links you need to download it yourself in the description of this video, as always. Uh, but I'm jumping in pretty much blind myself. Everything I know is just from watching Ligus' campaign, and I haven't watched all of it yet, so... And I think that's also part of the charm. I am swimming in the depth here and I don't know how to swim and I hope you guys will join me in the pool. So put on your swimming trunks. This is the worst anal analogy. I can't even say the word ever. So I'm just going to disregard this intro and I'll just see you on the campaign map when we start this campaign. Of course, very hard, very hard difficulty because I'm a masochist. Long campaign because we're in it for the long haul. Let's go. Alright, and now you can also tell why I typically script my intros, because I'm <laughs> not that smooth of a talker. Okay, the ship, as I'll just call it, is meant to be a difficult mod. Little money, problems with loyalty of generals, high unrest in settlements, bad reputation, aggressive AI factions, and many other special hurdles for the player. At the higher campaign difficulties, which we are playing on, there are new mechanics that may be difficult to understand and use efficiently without reading explanations. I'm a dude, I don't read. These new aspects of the mod and also some of the old game engine features will be explained in information windows popping out like this one, so there will be a lot of reading in the beginning, that is quite typical. They will appear over a few first dozens of turns, making you getting or refreshing your understanding the details of the game. Take note that much information is included in the traits description. Of course, you may also ignore those windows and learn the mod by trial and error. I like that approach. Uh, so there might still be some bugs, but it's pretty stable. We're playing on version 0.98, which I think is the latest version. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Campaign difficulty, very hard. Yes, we are <laughs> really going in the deep end. Uh, so piety, loyalty, yeah, those are things I need to take into account now. They're not really relevant in Divide and Conquer, but here we are. New generals are likely to be slightly less intelligent and have fewer initial positive traits. The agents, princesses, priests, merchants, diplomats, spies and assassins are also likely to have lower starting values. Okay, makes sense. New game mechanics, army supply cost and army morale, money will be very tight, generals may betray you, the AI factions will attack often and you may find sustainable expansion difficult. So we're gonna have to turtle a little bit. That's okay, I'm alright with that. And here we are. They say money is tight, and I just see Constantinople just raking in 14k a turn. So I assume upkeep is also quite a bit more expensive. I'm going to take the first century, just getting used to all my territory, because I already start with 15 regions. So my victory condition is to expand to 40 regions. I need to hold Jerusalem, which is over here, I think. Yeah, Jerusalem. Uh, let's see, Constantinople, we have that. Al-Kahira, where is that? 
Al Qahira. I'm probably butchering these names, by the way. Is that Egypt, maybe? Al Qahira? Could be Egypt. I know some things about history. Just want to preface that. I'm interested in history, but I don't know everything, especially about this time period. Not my expertise, so I'll probably say a lot of wrong things. Feel free to correct me on that. I love to be corrected and to learn. In terms of diplomacy, we are allied to Serbia, which is over here. That's the orange faction, I think. No, the orange faction is Hungary. So they're over here. Raskia. Ras. Okay, I see. In terms of war, I'm at war with the Salyukian probably saying that wrong as well, Irum, which I think is just Turkey. I thought, oh, they're Selchuks. I'm just going to call them Selchuks. Okay, I know that. And of course, the rebels or independent sovereignties. <laughs> it's a lot more esteemed than rebels, I suppose. Uh, let's take a look at my family tree as well. Who's in charge? Basileus Ioannis. Okay, we have a brother, Nikiforos Phryenios. That's Greek. I'm probably saying Greek wrong as well. Isakios Komnenos. And Constantinos. You can't have the Byzantine Empire without everyone being called Constantinos or Ioannos. Uh, we got some purple haired ladies. Unless, no, it looks like they're wearing some kind of shawl. Okay, so I have. That's my. That's a Roman co emperor, I see. But I think that just means my factioner. So I got a pretty healthy family tree. Lots of kids, lots of siblings. And a few good, healthy... Oh, this guy's already like 13 years old. He will be leading armies in no time. Perfect. So that's quite handy dandy. I guess we'll take a peek at my settlements. Uh, free upkeep, etc. is also going to be quite important. I'm not going to take a look at all my things, but... We've got some special stuff like the Hagia Sophia. Our Abbey. The... Whatever the hell is how you pronounce that. The Aqueduct. Okay, so that's 800 upkeep. Damn. But the public health bonus is quite massive. I see, I see. So who's in charge here? Basileus Ioannis. Is free upkeep not a thing? I guess it's only for, like, garrison troops, like the Contaratoi. Simashika Tagmata. We've got some Saxon Huskars. Okay. I guess those are meant to represent, like, the Byzantine Guard, which is quite cool. Cataphracts. And then, of course, Ioannis himself. I guess, I think it matters, like, in troop type, whether or not they can get free upkeep. I don't think these guys can get free upkeep. Strategos, yeah. Every Strategos had the responsibility dictated by the military laws of the Empire to recruit a unit of professional troops in order to guard the border fortifications. So these I might have to move to the borders. Yeah, we're gonna have to make sure that we make a lot of money here. We're at war with these guys. Orders. So I think... What does my general look like? Oikioi, okay. 7 attack, 11 charge, 25 defense. They're going to be quite important to use. So I think we need to expand in this direction first. If possible, I really don't want to screw with Hungary. So if I can just protect my border... Oh, there is a rebel settlement over here. Maybe I can expand there. Interesting. Um, oh yeah, religion is also a thing. The Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. Okay, how is our religion doing? Probably not that good near Turkey. Damn Turks. Yeah, it's quite bad in Smyrna. Let's move you there. Okay, we also hold... Uh, is that Crete? No, I think that's Rhodos. I don't know my <laughs> islands. This is Cyprus, I know that much. Alright, uh, so we hold that. I don't think we'll get attacked here anytime soon, although there might be pirates in this mod. Yes, but I might ship some troops over yes, towards Cyprus. Maybe to do like naval attacks, that could be quite good. Am I making money? I am making quite a bit of money, so I can invest some of it. I'm just going to assume that settlements like Thessalonica and Adrianopolis, Constantinople, they're going to be relatively safe settlements. Wallachia is rebel land. So I could maybe try and go for that. Would be a relatively easy uh, expansion. But I'd need to try to befriend the uh, other European factions. Let's try to make some money. So that, if it's a plus minus, that means it costs me money. Okay. 
All of this is going to cost me money. Makes sense, though. Like, everything costs me money. How do I make money? An alchemist's lab for firearms. Okay. So all of this... Ah, a harbor would bring in some cash. Okay, anything else? Italian trader headquarters. That could make me some money. Let's see, 8807. That would put me at 9150. It's so only extra 300. That's not that much. So I think I'm going to invest in, like, mines and stuff like that. What is this, a racing track? Port with shipwright, merchant's wharf, a river port. Hmm. That does bring in some money. Water mills. I'm just trying to see, like, where I can make the most money, because the game has kind of scared me a bit by saying that money will be so tight. 3,000 for 100, that's not bad. Food import, yeah, all of this costs me money. I'm just going to triple double check that there's no mines that I can get. Logging camp. Uh, no, grain exchange would be quite good. Uh, probably if there are mines to be built, I can't afford them. Stonemation. Mation. <laughs> Why do I sound like Sean Connery? Stonemation. Mm, no, doesn't seem like there's anything that gives me a quick... Ah, this is actually quite good. 200. Extra farms, food production. Yeah, we'll get farms. Farms are good. A well. That costs me money. An open pit. Ah, so that's sort of like a mine. That's quite cheap, and it gives me quite a nice money. Good. More of that, please. If I... Maybe those roads would be good as well. Roads are always nice. Nikaya. Uh, no. Okay. I think Cyprus and Rhodos, I think, can probably make me quite a bit of money if I upgrade it to have more trade or ports. But for now, I'll spend the last bit of my money on roads in Tarnovgrad. Okay, so that's all my money spent. It seems most likely that we'll get attacked near Turkey. So I'm just going to move my general on the bridge. Balkan archers, we don't need them. And give him some of the troops that don't get free upkeep. Uh, I want to have a nice organized army, so Cav goes first. That's how it is. Uh, Peltasts. Okay. And then some infantry. I'm going to need more troops than that, though, if I want to take anything, really. But I guess I can move some troops from Smyrna. Um, these guys. They're not doing anything. Let's move them over. Adrianopolis, extra calf. Calf is king. I'll organize the army a bit better. And I think I might just try and take Dargov this day, although I'd need an extra general for that. Have I got any generals that are currently not governing or doing anything? I think everyone is either governing or leading, except for the one guy in Turkey, but I need him there. So I think I'll wait then. I do have my eyes set on this fort, but I'm going to wait a little bit. As long as nobody else tries and take it. I will be fine. Roman merchant, you're not making a lot of money there. You could make more here. 569. 313. That's not bad. More cash, 250. What does this bring me in? 1171. Yeah, that's an easy grab. Unless there are better mines here. Glass, 202. 557 for textiles. Getting more merchants would be good. I don't know what the hell this is. 302. Well, whatever that is, doesn't bring in a lot of money. Alright, Bishop, 85, 65. Yeah, you need to preach the good word over there, my good lord. And then my diplomats. I surely should have some diplomats. Bosnia, you're already moving. That's the only diplomat? No. You're near the Pope. Interesting. I can talk to Sicily. You want to trade? I want to set up trade as much as possible. And then we'll talk to the Pope, see if he wants to trade. Who is the Pope? Innocentius V. Okay. Pontifex Maximus. Alright. Uh, Have I done everything I want to do? I think I can move more troops to border regions where they're more needed. Arta does not have a governor. That's a little bit alarming. Like these Peltasts, I think I'll move to 
So I want to be careful though, because they can all like rebel, which is really annoying. So I'll have to be wary for that. I'll tell you, I'll keep the garrison, but could do with some extra troops, but feels like I need to turtle a little bit before I can expand. If he tries to attack, then I'll just have to deal with it. I don't trust these Turks worth a damn. And that's not me being racist, that's me playing lore accurate Byzantium. <laughs> Alright, I'll move... maybe this guy. Let him govern Nessos. I think I can benefit more from having him there. Another thing I should probably do is like mess around with... Oh yeah, we got races and taxes. I don't need Constantinople to grow further. So I think I can easily boost that to a high tax rate. Nikaya can still expand, so I'm just going to leave it at normal. I want to leave it at normal for the most part. Corinthos, I think maybe Corinthos could do with an upgrade, so I think I'll put that to low. Thessalonica, 80,000 is a lot. Constantinople can't be, oh it's 100,000, that's a lot. So I think Thessalonica will also lower, for now, for now. I just want to improve, actually, 36,000, we need 80,000, that is an insane number. So maybe I, no, let's keep it on low for now. Uh, and I think that's all the settlements I need to change my tax rate. Yeah, unless extra agent to train. An assassin could be fun. I don't know. Assassins, I don't, because assassins aren't a thing in Divide and Conquer, so I haven't used an assassin in a while, but I think if you get like an assassin, like really high level, max out his subterfuge, he actually becomes quite good. So, I, oh, screw it, why not? It's not that expensive. So much for saving money. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. I really think this campaign might just be too much for me. We'll see. When I started up the game, the first factions that kind of sprung into mind were Portugal. For some reason, I'm always drawn to Portugal in Medieval 2. And also Sweden slash Norway. I was kind of debating them. Kiev and Rus also kind of came up. But then I was like, you know... I need to give the people what they want, and the people, they want Byzantium. Byzantium is wildly popular, and for a good reason. Right, so they moved some troops out of Konya towards Atalea, but if that's all they got, then that's not that crazy. If your treasury runs empty, most of the cell swords will abandon you, yes. One turn before your mercenaries disband, so it's only for mercenaries, okay. You will receive a warning. You have to get out of the red immediately, otherwise some of the units that you have recruited as mercenaries will indeed abandon you. Even if you had not recruited mercenaries, some of your units recruited in a normal way serve as mercenaries, and these will abandon you as well. Ah, so it's not just for mercenaries, I see. Yeah, we always need to make sure that we have some Florence as a reserve, something I didn't do at the end of last episode. Uh, turn, not episode. Attention, Achtung, that and that. You're playing at a very hard difficulty. Money forecast display in the financial panel may differ significantly from what you will actually have. Okay. So basically, we just need to have a reserve. Byzantine reforms are not fully implemented yet. Ah. To get the better heavy cavalry, a pronoia reform is needed and the Byzantine Renaissance will buff up the Ikena Studios effects. In general, however, the faction plays similar as it was before. Okay. I haven't played it before, so that doesn't say much. Bayan Arslan. I could maybe move out of Atalea, face him on the field and kill him. Angora is also looking relatively ripe for the taking. First things first. Hungary does not like me, that is worrisome. I really don't want to screw with Hungary. I need to spy on Hungary. Okay, they're not bulking up their forces just yet. We have our assassin, which I want to let loose on the Turks. Assassinate some Turks. I could practice on this Phoenician guy. Well, it's 15% chance. Ooh. He's talented, though. You have a better chance at, like, destroying buildings? We'll see. Let's just set him free in the world. We'll see how he can fare. New family member. Good. I said they got all these traits, etc. So that's all just for my Basileus. My faction leader. 
Oh man, uh, I know I need to min-max all of that, but it's a little bit too much. <laughs> so I just see extra tax income and I'm just a happy guy, so we'll leave it at that. Hey, there we go. I have won the campaign. I'm number one everywhere. Look at that. Am I just... Look at that. Ah, oh, damn Selchuks. Are those different Selchuks? Oh, there's more Selchuks. Oh god, there's too many Selchuks. Alright, I'm going to move Sarkius out. It's risky, I know, but... Oh, these Balkan archers are dirt cheap in recruitment, but quite expensive in upkeep. So the best thing to do would be to recruit them right before the battle and then immediately disband them afterwards. Because then you only pay the very small recruitment cost, but not the upkeep cost. Okay, I'm moving carefully because I know there's a bigger army out here. Should have moved my spy first, probably. Some mines in there, a metal mine. How much would that bring in? Where is my merchant? Is that a good mine? 426. No, we're going to the gold mine, baby. What I assume to be a gold mine. So do I sally out with Atalea? Towards this guy? Killing him early on would be good. He's got pretty poopy archers. Atath militia. And then this guy himself who has regular bodyguard. I think we can beat him. I think that's the easiest way to get rid of this guy. It's a good practice session as well. And I can get... Ooh, these are cool troops. Aldari Lances, Turkupol Arches. Yeah, again, recruitment quite low, but upkeep massive. Armenian Heavy Cavalry. Ooh, those are quite cool. But yeah, I don't need them right now, but it's good to bear in mind. Get them for like one battle, but don't keep them in your army for turn upon turn. Because you'll struggle. Alright, I think we can uh, do our first fight. Bowser of Power is quite easy. It seems I have played this like a year ago. Uh, Strategos. I think that's a voice line from room one. Right. So try to pin down his cavalry with my spears. Shoot their archers. Run down the archers as well. Maybe shoot the militia instead. Our cav are going to try to keep them in the back and only use them when we're sure they won't die. Because I can't afford to lose this governor. Right, Alexios. Let's see what we can do against these Turks. Alright, here we are. The landscape is promising. Wow, I didn't even know that Medieval 2 could have this crazy of a landscape. That actually opens up some possibilities. If I can put my troops here, oh, it seems the landscape is even too rough just to deploy my troops. It's also going to make our cavalry next to useless. Where can I even deploy? Path obstructed? Oh yeah, because there's no way to reach that platform. Okay, okay, okay. I'm happy to be on the high ground. Uh, Obi-Wan was right. Alright, let's deploy our archers here. Hello? Archers? Archers! Thank you. We'll take a peek at the units in a moment. I'm gonna have to move them on the battlefield. So, unless my eyes deceive me, these guys look a lot more professional than the other guys. Just based on the model in the UI. We have the Kontaratoi, which look pretty militia tier, nothing too crazy. They got themselves a nice shield and a spear. I mean, the spear is the most effective weapon of history, so that'll do. Our archers, they look quite cool, I like the look of them. Psiloi Toxatai. I think Toxatai means like arrow, I don't know what Psiloi means. And then we have, yeah, they definitely look more elite. Scoutatoi, Scutatoi. They have mustaches, which also adds to professionalism. And then, of course, we have the Okioi. Oikoi? Oikioi? Oikioi. Just heavy calf. It's, uh, almost like a cataphract. Actually, that is a cataphract. Okay, well, let's see what the Turks have brought. Uh, oh, God, they're all the way back there. This is going to be very difficult to reach them. Can I go here? Yes. And then we'll fight on this hill. Unless they move before. Let's take a peek at their units in the meantime. They look quite cool, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you'd expect from a Turkish general. I love the design on the armor. Very, very cool. Then we have just regular spear guys. Nothing too crazy there. Quite like their facial models. I don't know why. Uh, these guys, of course, have the superior facial hair. And that's all they really brought. 
They do look fancy, I'll give them that. And they got curved bows. Curved bows, I tell you. Alright, I don't want to get my troops too tired, but this high ground definitely doesn't help. This terrain is wild. But I like it. They move in, like, really tight formations. They're already getting winded, yeah. I can understand why. Moving on high ground makes your troops more tired. No special abilities or anything of the sort, so that's good. I don't have to worry about it then. So they're all the way behind that hill. I mean, that would tire me out. Okay, uh, I'll just make a quick jump cut to when the action starts so I can record a bit longer. Okay, we're almost there, so I'm already going to start doing things properly now. Let's see if we can use our archers to just hey, rain hell down below on them. They're not going to appreciate that. Move the troops. A little bit worried about their cavalry, of course. Need to give them respect. But the terrain is working in my favor. Oh, they're already panicking. They're like, we really picked the worst position. Yeah. Uh, how do my archers compare to their archers? Three melee attack, two missile attack. Four missile attack! Ooh, these guys are much better. Okay. Well, let's see how powerful high ground is then, eh? They're going that way. Okay, interesting. Okay, uh, maybe don't get in front of that. I'm not sure how you can see them, but... That's actually a pretty nice angle. And they, there's no way they can hit me! That would be the most impressive shot I've ever seen. Yeah, they're just shooting into the dirt. They're frustrated. I get that. How are the other Turks reacting? They're yeah, just kind of standing there. Don't think I should waste too many shots on them, though. Because they're actually just kind of useless at this rate. So maybe I should give the bodyguard a volley. Let's give him one volley, see if it does anything. No, 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 no. Don't block their path, please. Just stay out of range. You're doing a great job. You put you on guard mode. So you don't start running around like a headless chicken. Okay, they are dropping. If they get up the hill, then my infantry will deal with them. Although <laughs> they're getting very tired. These guys have significantly worse condition than the scout at all, even though they are wearing the heavier armor and heavier weaponry too, probably. Okay, they're hugging the sideline. They don't know how to deal with the hill. It's too much for them. I thought you guys were native to this terrain. You guys suck. Nice. Good shots. Good shots. Turkish archers are coming in, so let's give them a warm Byzantine welcome. Malakach, get them! And then my tired ass scatter toy. I just don't. Uh, sorry, not scatter toy. Contara toy. Uh oh. Don't chase him. They're trying to lure us. We shall not commit. If they send in their bodyguard, we'll send in our scatter toy. I'm going to try to remember all the names of all the units by the end of this campaign, but it's gonna take a while. Alright. Okay, I think we're gonna send in our troops. See if we can shoot on the militia. General, I'm just gonna have you around to boost the morale of the men. You fire on the militia. Alright, our spears have engaged. We should get a bonus against Cav, right? Yeah, we do. Now these guys will struggle. Look how epic this looks. Fighting off the Turkish hordes. Screw you, Turks! I'm sorry for any Turks who are watching. <laughs> I even got subtitles, look at that! We, remain true and wholehearted. Victory will be oh, we will remain wholehearted, don't you worry about that. That's the thing though, if I curse out factions in Divide and Conquer, no one's gonna be like, um, Izzy, I'm actually a warrior of Khand. But there's probably people from Turkey who are watching this and are like, uh, could this Belgian guy stop yelling racial insults my way? I'm sorry, but it's part of my Byzantine campaign. I mean, to be fair, I'll do the same thing if Hungary decides to attack me, which they really shouldn't do. If they know what's good for them. 
Please don't rout. I want to kill you. I don't know what a Turkish general is called. A sultan? Our men have slain the Saracen, Saracen general. I can live with that. Now we must send his men All right, I'm sure their morale will now just... Yep, their morale is gone. Let's see that we can take him prisoner. Strategos, get them! Go, 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 get the Malaka. They are running with their tails between their legs, Saracen dogs. The Holy Land belongs to the Emperor. Everything around the Mediterranean belongs to the Emperor. Mare Nostrum, bitch. My Latin is better than my Greek, and my Latin is awful. Chase him, chase him, chase him. They're gonna make it out. No. I mean, the most important part was killing the general, of course, but... Ah, uh, I didn't want him to get out. Ah, it is what it is. Yeah, they have crossed the border into New Jersey, so I cannot track them. I can still catch these guys. Oh, they're coming back? They came back! Come on, take him prisoner. <laughs> you idiots! You were safe! Oh, the game still considers him across the red line. Okay. But I mean, 22 casualties, and we killed Bayan Arsalan. I'll take that any day of the week. The archers did a really good job. Nice, nice, nice. Good job, guys. Good job. Our first win. And I think I might just ransom. Because that's just bodyguard unit. And seeing as the guy is dead, the guy body they were guarding, if they take him back, I don't think those guys will do anything, so... Oh, never mind. Yeah, that's what you get, prick. Stay out of my lands. See, part of me... Oh, wait, Galathia. Ah, this is... Because I was, like, confused. Is that another settlement in here? But that's all part of Galatia. Okay. I could try to attack Kamaluddin with his Archeos. I'm going to pick up some of those mercenaries if I indeed go for Angora. Is that present-day Ankara? I think it might be. So. Autonomy of a local institution. I just want to make money. That's all I cared about. Roads would be good. But I don't want to invest into anything too expensive. So quarries are nice. Yeah, quarries are king. Let's keep those 6k as reserve for now. Um, let us talk to... Do I need to talk to the Pope? It would be nice to befriend the Pope, I guess. Although I do want to restore the Roman Empire, so... Perhaps Italy will be on the table at one point, we'll see. Uh, no, those are the Crusader States. I mean, they're not really the Crusader States. Status Pontificius. Okay, we'll talk to him. Hello. You want to trade, Mr. Pope? Thank you. Uh, let's go to the south. I don't know who the south... Who is in charge. Is that Sicily? I think, yeah, that's Sicily. Okay, interesting. Mr. Envoy. Can you scout this area here? It's rebel, but I don't know... Ragusa. Okay, interesting. They got some good troops. I would like to take that rebel land, but I don't know if I have the troops to do so. Hmm. Mostly been keeping an eye on Targoviste, but... Captain Leonardos. Well, let's move some troops to Adrianopolis. Uh, you can go to Triadica, because you're just... One tile short. And then we'll move them to Tarnovgrad, and maybe we'll try and take Targoviste. But, I don't know yet. I don't want to expand too fast. And if anything, I want to expand towards the Turks, because I don't trust those pricks. I don't know how big the Turks are. I could check that in the faction ranking scroll. They're the green Turks, right? What are they called? I don't see any green. Oh, Lord. Uh, it's not those guys. It's not those guys. No, that's different Arabic. Uh, oh, there they are. And I want to do... Territorial. Wait, what? They only hold two regions? Really? Hmm. Well, that would make it very easy to expand. That would make it very, very easy to expand. I would make my borders a lot safer. Hmm. Well, that's something to take into account then, definitely. Where to, sire? Without a trace. Yeah, it's the Sultan, so I guess their faction is in here then. 
Could you check for me real quick? As you wish. Oh yeah! So they got their heir there. <laughs> that rhymes. And then their faction leader over there. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So killing them would give me access to... Well, all this land that's ripe for the taking. Very interesting. I think I can press the end turn. I think I've done everything I need to do, right? I mean, we still need to convince those infidels. Perhaps I need more priests. Do I have more priests? How many bishops have I got? One, two... Yeah, you don't need to be doing anything. Oh no, never mind. These people are all infidels. God damn. I need to set up the Byzantian Inquisition. Nobody expects them. No, but that's good. I really thought those rum Selchuks, as I'll just refer to them now, I thought they had a lot more troops and a lot more settlements, but they're quite small. I don't think they're the real Turks. I think there's another evil Uber Turk waiting somewhere. Still ready to strike. The proper Selchuk. But I don't know the factions. <laughs> but yeah, those Selchuks, those rum Selchuks, there's two settlements. That's nothing. I start with like, what, 15? A costly army. There is your army without a general traveling in your realm. To support this army, you have to spend another thousand florins. What? What? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was just moving some troops around. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'll take a look at you in a moment. Okay, so we get extra supply costs. I know about that. Okay. So, really, we don't want to have too many roaming armies. Especially not in enemy lands. Okay. Byzantine reforms. Yeah, yeah, we know that. New mission. Take Targovista. Yeah, I know. I know. I want to. Georgian minister. So they're just upset, but I want to move these troops to the front line, but they just can't reach it. So I need to, like, bring over a general to transport them over. That's a little annoying, but I guess... I guess I can... I just need to adapt. Agent detected. Someone tried to kill... My Strategos. Prick. Oh, they brought in a lot more troops now. Okay. So they might have another go at Atalea. And perhaps taking Angora would not be that easy. But they moved their Sultan over. You idiot. So they might try and kill Izakios as we lay siege to Angora. I will pick up... Oh, this guy's really expensive though. But if they sally out and try to face me... I'm just going to pick him up. We'll lay siege to Angora. Uh, can build all that? No. We'll do it like that then. Fari archers. Actually, there's only two of them. So I want three rams and three ladders so I can attack from three sides. They can only defend two. They might pull troops from Konya, but in a way I want them to, because then these Armenian heavy cavalry that I pay but loads amount of money for it will actually do something for me. Al Murabitun, I have no idea. I think that's Egypt. Okay, so this guy came of age. Wonderful. I need more generals. Um gods, I really want these guys, but look at the price tag on them. I'm gonna have to get a lot more money from them. But then I can move you towards Tarnovgrad. With a quick stop here. Um, move you towards Tarnovgrad. You can lead the army towards Targoviste. Uh, pick up these guys along the way. And suitable husband. Are you suitable for Irene? Who's Irene? Is she a princess of mine? No. So she's not uh, in my faction tree. I don't know. You're not that good. You're a bit rough. Hmm... I'm gonna ignore you for now. I might change my mind. I don't know how good husbands are in this game. Okay, there's another rebel settlement up there. But once I deal with the rum Seljuks, I have an easier time dealing with all those rebel lands. Okay, I still have money, so maybe I should invest it a little bit. I'm not building anything in Thessalonica, so getting some farms would be good. Or the stonemason. It just feels like money flows away real quickly. But this seems quite good. It's quite cheap, the port with Dockyard. It does take a lot of turns to build. The Merchant's Wharf might also be good. How much does that add? Let's see, our trade is 3.83, 4.1. That's not bad. I think I'll take that. 
I think trade by sea is going to bring in the most money. 5,000 for that. Is that good? 9.3k, 9.6k. Yeah, that's quite good. Okay. I just need to make sure my economy is strong and then the troops will come afterwards. All right, we're also making money with our merchant now. Getting more merchants would be quite good. And I definitely need to get more trade rights as well. So perhaps I should try and get another diplomat that I can send towards Hungary, maybe the Kievan Rus, Novgorod, Poland maybe as well. Maybe they want to trade. I don't trade with infidels. We don't do that. <laughs> they probably want a ceasefire. <laughs> do it. Ask me. Ah, uh, screw you, mate. Uh, attack me. Come on, do it. You pussy. You don't have the guts. But I'm willing to find out if you do. Disaster strikes Aleppo. What's Aleppo? The importance of financial reserves. Always keep a few... Yeah, you've hammered that often. I know, I know. Pirates may threaten to attack you unless you pay them five... So I th by all this, I just deduct like 5,000 is the minimum. So that's good. The Pantocrator Monastery. From now on, the Orthodox faction will be able to build huge cathedrals in their cities. This will translate into faster learning of the generals, who will be available earlier for service to their emperor, and will also have better qualities. Okay, so getting the, those Pantocrator would be quite good. I'm sorry that I don't read everything, but... Oh, Lord! You just picked up every mercenary they had on sale. That doesn't matter, because I can take Angora. Unless they move towards Constantinople. But then I'll just ignore you and go for Konya and finish off like that. Yeah, the Sultan will be pleased, because you are you should have attacked me, mate. Sultan Mesut the Greedy. I guess that sums it up nicely. He only got the arches himself and then standard bodyguard. There's only two of them. I'm sure Angora has massive walls and towers. These guys are out of reinforcement range, because they're dumb. So... I should be able to just kite them. I don't have as much infantry as I would like. I do have a lot of cavalry. I think I could beat Kasim Olusoy on the field, to be fair, because he has a lot of poopy troops. But I'll take much more joy from taking Angora. Maybe he'll lay siege to it and I can fight him on the walls. Let's make an extra save, just in case. Uh, I don't think I'm being greedy here. I think I'm doing quite a good job at punishing the Turks, which in a Byzantium campaign... Is a very good thing. Okie dokie do. This is a proper settlement. We'll tear that down. We'll put a nice cross on it. Besides that, this is a pretty cool place. So, let us move our troops smart. But first, let's take a look at our units. Units we haven't seen before yet. The Vardariotes, which are horse archers. They look very cool. Definitely learn the thing or two from the Turks, I suppose. The Tagmata Cataphract, which looks similar to my general unit, but well, they seem even more heavily armored. 7, 8, 23. Yeah, they don't really... Don't really need to, like, be scared of our general. They are quite comparable. The Pronoyarioi. I am butchering those names. Peltasts. Oh, these look quite cool, I must say. The Sigmakika Tagmata. Very cool. I wish they had even more of a Roman look, but I guess the banners, etc. are still very Roman. Our Huskars. Our Byzantine Guard. Uh, more Pranarios. Good at all we've seen them. And then, of course, the Armenian Heavy Cavalry. I'm sure they have a bone to pick with the Turks. Very cool looking unit as well. I like the headbands and everything and the helmets. Very, very cool. Alright, we'll split the troops up a little bit. Uh, just because I want to attack from multiple sides to make sure that they have to divert their forces. So, Huskars, you can take the front gate. You, Skutatoi, can take this side. Uh, don't I have more rams? No, I do have more rams, but I don't have enough infantry to man them. Okay, interesting. And then the last ladders, the Tagmata, I'll plop them here. Then we'll see how the AI deploys, but I should be able to just outmaneuver them. 
Emphasis on should, as always. Okay, they put one troop there. So these guys should be able to rush the walls. You as well. Take control of the gate and then the troops can come in. And we can finish off the Sultan. Look at him. Regretting all his life decisions. I love his banner though. It's enthusiastic. I'll leave it at that. What have we got here? He's already moving his troops to Fari Arches. He's trying to counter my Tagmata, but I'm just not using them. Pascals, <laughs> I'd love to send you against the Sultan. Oh, these guys look so cool. No, I'm not regretting playing not as Norway or any of the Norman factions. I know, I know, Saxons aren't Normans, is he? I know, I know. Close enough. Alright, cavalry, give support. How cool does that look with the purple and everything? Oh man. Look at that. Sometimes you don't need a fantasy setting because history is just as cool. Peltasts. I think they'll also be good against Cav. No, actually not. Okay. These guys are probably armor piercing. Yes. And a bonus against Cav. Okay, they'll be perfect for taking down the Sultan. So I gotta keep an eye on the Fari archers that they don't try to kill my guys. Seems they are moving in that direction, so I will move these guys uh, on there. If they trigger towers, we pull back the Huskals. I'm gonna do that already, I don't want to risk losing them. Move them to the side until the Fatty Arches pull back. Walls are no match for valor. Okay, scaling the walls with the scooter toy. Let's go boys, yeah, oh that looks cool. See them scaling the walls. The Fatty Arches don't know where to go first. Our general has abandoned us. The Sultan just cowers in the town square. What are we to do? Well, all you can do is die. Oh, the Sultan has moved. Where is the Sultan going? No, oh, not anywhere in particular. It's just taking a more scenic approach to his burial site. Alright, boys. Push that ram into place. I love the helmet design as well. Look at that. The plumes. It looks so good. Alright. Scale the wall, scale the wall. I don't actually need to destroy the gate. Because I already hold... Actually, I don't need to destroy the gate. If the other army attacks me, I want to make sure that the gate is still intact. I mean, I could repair it, but that costs me money. Money I would rather not spend. The ladders are now in place. Walls are no match for Good. and force of arms. Uh, you guys come down from the wall. There we are. We'll activate or we'll take control of the gatehouse. I know I'm I'm playing this very methodically, but I really want to be careful. To God, we have captured the enemy's walls. These walls are not mine yet, but almost. Watch it swap. Yep, there we go. Open the gate, we're in boys. Horses. A city as ours, ripe for the taking. Now oh, he's sending out his archers that way. Fine. Kill them. Strategos, you're in. These guys are having second thoughts. Look at these guys. Oh, they look so ready. Yes. Come on, boys. I smell blood in the air. We're all getting in. Even the Stratagos himself is joining. I think he wants the Sultan's head. The Basileus will promote me for this. Come on, boys. Whoever kills the Sultan will have a hefty promotion. Coming in from all sides, and now my Normans can also come in. You guys, go take control of the wall. Send in the Normans. 
There's heavy duty work to be done. Okay, they're coming in. Peltast, stop. Scooter toy, move in first. Get ready to chuck your javelins. If they're in range, you chuck. Chuck! Alright, the fiery archers are here. Strategos. Okay, impetuous. Let's see if I can move the peltasts a bit wider. Is the calf in? Oh, they're coming in right now, okay. The scooter toy should be able to kill the Sultan. There's fiery archers don't stand a chance. Don't skirmish, don't skirmish. There's no need for that. Come on. Yes. Oh, look at that. Deus Vult, pricks. They say double time, but it always sounds like camel time to me. And it is not camel time. I repeat, it is not camel time. Am I Peltast chucking? The angle's a bit awkward, I'm aware. That might be some friendly fire, but I just want to see them... Nice, that works out. Oh, you can stop that. Trying to trample my troops. That's not going to work out. Strategos. The battle is in our favor. If we remain true and wholehearted, is the gate open? Will be ours. Almost. Come on, guys. There's more killing to be done. First episode, I'm already killing a sultan. You have no idea how happy that makes me. Come on, boys. Only half the enemy force remains. Get in the thick of it. Stop them from firing. Charge the Sultan! He's countercharging! Get him! He's not countercharging! He's trying to run away, but he can't because he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. And I'm Dwayne Johnson. And we lost a few on that charge. It's a bit risky sending the Strategos in, but. The chance of glory is too high for him not to do that. Is the gate open? Yes, the gate is open. Should have probably waited for my huskars, but whatever. I'd say it's worth it. There he is. I think that's the Sultan trying to get out. Oh no, he's stuck. Yeah, not going anywhere, buddy. Yes! And let us finish this. The Sultan of Turkey is dead. Long live the Strategos. Yeah! Look at that! That's a pretty good win for the siege. Very nice. Good to tell you, yeah, they struggled a bit, but they were up against their best unit, so... I do not blame them one bit. Yeah. All right, Angora is mine. Uh, oh, is that a doom stack they also got? <laughs> I didn't know this game had doom stacks. Oh, and they automatically player aggressivity tracking. What? I'm not that aggressive. Just a little bit. I'll occupy it for now, although I probably shouldn't have occupied it. If I just lower taxes and maybe add some gallows, that's a quick boost to a law bonus. So I think that's probably the quickest way to get public order where it should be. Let's see. We've renamed it. Okay. Player aggressivity tracking. This is one of the most important features of the ship at a very hard difficulty. The game will track your conquest speed using a point system. Each time you conquer a settlement that was historically not a core province of your faction, between 3 and 18 points aggression points are added. This number depends mostly on the qualities of your faction leader. If he has a crown, the number is halved. What kind of diplomatic skills does he have? Blah blah blah. 
If the number exceeds 12 points, you'll be considered an aggressive faction, and above 24, you will be called a warmonger. Your reputation will be impacted. Oh no, this is not good. This unrest will decrease at a rate of one point per turn. Oh, okay. So there's no way I can rush Konya, unfortunately. So I guess I'll have to sit tight. I wonder what I will cut from you. Caucasus Hillman. And any mercenaries? No. Then I'll just kind of wait. I will still finish off Turkey, but I'm not going to bum rush them. It would make my life a lot easier, but the game doesn't want me to do that. So, okay, I respect that. Okay, I'm going to move back. Can I still take Targoviste? It's only rebel land, so I assume I can. Oh, that's my assassin. I need to move my spy. Oops. Unless they're interested in a ceasefire now, then I guess I'll do it. Okay, fine. See, that's good, because then I can chill for a turn. I get an extra settlement. I can chill, turtle. I really do not need to play too aggressive. This mod is going to be quite difficult for me in that regard, because I'm used to being a very aggressive player. Ports are nice. Let's get ports. I need to save, like, 5k. But I think I can do that. Logging cam, sure. Okay. Yes. I got all these troops here that currently don't do anything, so part of me is like, just disband them so you save money with the upkeep. Like, these scooter toys are very expensive, but in a way, I'm like, I don't want to disband them because you never know that I'll need them. So now we're no longer at war then with anyone, no, just rebels. Okay, that's quite nice. I will keep the garrison in Ankara because I don't trust these Turks for a damn. But then I can focus more on Targoviste. So let's get Andronikos here. I don't know if the aggression script like does it work against rebel settlements as well. Seeing as the game tells me to take Targoviste, I'm going to assume it's part of my core regions and part of the settlements I'm allowed to take. Alright. Let's move them and then pick up some troops from Tarnovgrad, pretty much everyone. Lay siege to Targoviste. Okay, that seems good. Unless there's some really cheap units here. Bulgarian mercenaries. Nah. Never trust the Bulgarians. Uh, keep an eye on them. Okay. I think I can I can rest easy with that. Taking on Kira definitely makes me happy. Um, let's see, suitable husband. You're quite better. You're much younger, so there's more potential. Your loyalty is better. So I think I'll take you. And you are... where exactly? Where the bloody hell are you? Are you on the island? No? Where are you? I just unlocked you and I have no idea where you're at. Oh, there you are. Hersona. Oh, shit, I didn't even realize this was territory I had. Whoops. I'm gonna send a boat to pick you up, mate. You don't need to rot away over there. What territory is up there? Oh, some sort of stepper faction? How much is a watchtower? 2,000! Jeez! But I really do need one. I just need to make sure it's positioned as best as possible. Cannot construct watchtower here. There we are. Mm hmm. Interesting. Settlements I didn't realize I had. I'm not gonna leave you rotting there, because that's kind of sad. But it's interesting for me as a point of expansion. Perhaps the Mare Nostrum should get a new meaning and should be the Black Sea instead of the entire Mediterranean, because that might be too optimistic. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, see, they all get free upkeep, so... I think I need to expand my free upkeep as much as possible. It's currently something I spend a lot of money on. Alright, let's go through these turns a little bit. Um, need to try not always be looking for expansion. I need to get out of that mindset. Very important. Very difficult. Okay. But I'm having fun so far. And in a way, I like that it's punishing me for being too aggressive. And the game straight up also tells me. They're like, alright, you done goofed. Here's a doom stack. Small doom stack. Now, think about what you just did and don't do it again. And I like that. It also focuses or forces you more to do diplomacy stuff. Commanders should fight personally in battles. If a general is the commander of your forces in battle and he does not enter the fray, then he will be likely to develop nasty traits such as cowardice, 
Okay, that's good. That's something I already do. As such, he will need to risk his life from time to time to ensure that he will not turn into a bad commander. For any general, even the more administratively minded ones, it is always useful for him to have at least some military experience. Even a small battle against weak rebels counts. With such experience, the general will fare much better in times of necessity. For instance, a general besieged by rebels is likely to develop bad traits if he has no prior experience. Okay. Note also that at the beginning of the campaign, most factions will not have access to many of their units. These units will become available only later in the game, when certain historical events which trigger them have occurred. For example, the Polish medium cavalry unit, that one, will appear only after the development of heavy mail around 1.2 KAD. Grooming governors. Okay, that sounds naughty. Young generals need to go to school, as education is one of the most important factors in gaining skills later in life. Teenagers should be sent to a castle or a settlement with a school, for pagans a temple, and they should stay there without travelling. After some time, these young generals will gain at least a basic education, which will prevent them from sliding into ignorance and developing negative traits. Administratively minded generals will defend most by staying in a settlement, which will allow them to gain traits useful for future governance. Some traits may be acquired just from visiting a settlement, or staying in or visiting a castle. To become a truly good governor, it is best to task a general with the governance of a well-developed city with a diversity of buildings. This will also create an opportunity for the general to acquire some negative traits as well, but that in general the benefits will outweigh the risks. Okay, generals with the scholar trait will be able to develop the best of traits. Such men are rare gems indeed. Roughly 1 in 10 generals coming of age will be blessed with this trait. So the way I understand it... Uh, oh, the locals. Damage to the farms, irrigation... Uh, wait, what is this? The people demanded you undertake repairs to restore their sources of living. Uh, our marauding troops and the supply sergeants have destroyed essential facilities. Damn, that's annoying. So are these just more rebels? That's... I don't know where the rebels popped up. I wish it would show me. I assume the farms are destroyed in Triadica? No? I'll have to check that in a moment. The gallows are complete in Ankara, so we can now force some happiness. Let's get some uh, Christian, well, not Christianity, but some religion flowing. Um, so the way I understand it, this new guy at Chersonas, it's best to send him towards Constantinople to pick up some traits, right? He's unintelligent. Nice. Okay. <laughs> but he's hot, so, you know. That is honestly the best way to enjoy your time in university. That's basically what he's doing, he's just setting out yes, to go study at Constantinople. Can you make it in there? Win. You can, oh. nice. So now you just learn the ways of the warrior. He's a teenager. Can be educated in educational facilities. Good. He's a naive child, irresponsible in battles, but traveling fast. I like all of those things. Very relatable, even though I'm not a teenager anymore, far from it. Alright, I think I'll send my Patriarch straight towards Ankira. 53% Orthodox is not as bad as I thought it would be. I'd love to assassinate some people, but I need to pick some easier targets. Ah, a Captain. That's perfect, just some practice. I'm sure the Turks won't like it, but... They're Turks, I mean... <laughs> uh, don't retrain that, that's pointless. Let's move this General out out of my land, so he doesn't pillage them anymore. Um, I'll leave behind one Vardariotas. And then we'll try and take Targoviste soon. Don't eat those mercenaries. Let's spy on him. I need to do like these stupid spying missions just to increase their traits so they become better. Um, Bishop, yeah, you're having a good time. Ah, oh, Sicily's here. Giorgio. Giorgio. Okay. But anything else I need to be doing? I still have some money left to spend, so maybe if there's money to be made, food import, public order, population growth. But that's minus. So the population growth goes down. Slower growth in the other side. Oh, so this ah, uh, okay, I see. It improves massively the population growth in this settlement, but at the cost of population growth in every other settlement. So that's not worth it. Not for now, at least. 
I keep investing in these ports, but they seem like the best deal out there. We get them relatively quickly and they make decent amounts of cash. So I think I'm going to keep doing that. Just ports everywhere, where possible. Um, let's get a Merchant's Wharf here, because that improves my population growth by a lot as well. And always keep 5k steady. Uh, right. That will chill now. Unless there's something here I need to destroy. Madrasa. Understanding of the Quran. Uh, I don't know if we need that. Shisha then, we definitely need that. I just don't want them to keep growing more Muslim, because that's bound to lead to cultural unrest. Okay, but orthodoxy is gaining popularity, that's good to see. And I think we're replacing the uh, madrasa with our church, so that works. I'd love to finish them off, but don't want to get punished for being an aggressive little prick, so we're going to take it easy. Alright, I think I can press the end turn. Yeah, they hate me. That's fine. Okay. So, Nikiforos is getting somewhat senile. How old is he? 70. Ah, oh, okay, I get that. I guess I'll need to replace him at some point. Um, I'm just scared that he'll attack Atalea. Also, his economy must be in complete shambles. Alright, am I moving all my diplomats? Because I was considering... Uh, you're just chilling here. Maybe I should send you a bit deeper. We'll see where we'll move you. I can talk to Sicily through you. Are we already trading? I guess we're already trading. I don't want to ally with anyone right now. Let's move you more towards the Holy Roman Emperor. See if he's interested in talking. My fellow Emperor man. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Nah, that's good. We're gonna just chill a bit. Turtle a little bit. That's not bad. Make sure our economy is strong and stable. And look into more free upkeep, because that's really costing me by far the most money. Which we don't want. Tomorrow, that's good to hear. Mission expired. Another has taken this rebel settlement. What? How? There was no one there. Hang on a moment. Yeah, yeah I'll read that in a bit. How did that happen? Who are you? Oh, that's annoying. Cumans? Oh god, not Cumans. Oh, I've played enough Kingdom Come Deliverance to know that they're bad news. I do hate you, but... Uh, fine. Well, that's sad. And this land has probably fallen already as well, Bosnia. Hmm. That's bad news. I don't like the Cumans. I don't trust the Cumans one bit. I think they're going to betray me. Well, betray, there's not much there to betray. So I'm thinking, keeping an eye on the Cumans, definitely bolster my troops at Tarnovgrad. Yeah, these guys had free upkeep, but not anymore. I want to do something with Andronikos. He's only 16. Strategos of Adrianople. Wait, this guy is Strategos. He's only 15. There's no way he's 15 with that moustache. Come on, man. I'm 29, I don't grow that moustache. So I'm thinking maybe abandon this here, or maybe just attack the humans, but then Shersonasos is going to get attacked as well. Like, that would be bad news. And I'd be brandished a warmonger again. I don't know how they took that settlement so quickly. I didn't realize they were laying siege to it. I guess the enemy, like, sallied out or something and then got their ass whooped because Cubans are very good. Part of me wants to move towards Bosnia. Yeah, I guess we will, but I'll move through their land so I don't pillage my own farms. Yeah, they don't like that. Yeah, screw you. I don't like you taking that settlement, mate. Uh, the locals from this province are unhappy. Which province? I wish I could see which province. I would assume Ankira, but I don't know. Oh, hello there. Is there a son in your family you have in Uh, whoops, no, no, never mind, never mind. <laughs> You're way too young, lady. Can I burn you at the stake? Can I assassinate you? 
the problem? What is the name? Hmm. Who or what? Now, why am I thinking about what's wrong with me, Izzy? Dude, what's wrong with you? There's no reason for you to murder her. I just need to practice. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Uh, let's kill the Rizza. The Wu Tang Clan will just have to find a new one. Nice. Nice. So now he becomes better. I'm going to train him so he can murder sultans everywhere. You're going to be my personal pet project. I'll get back to you in about four years, Guru. Though you'll probably be buried off by that point. Um, so you are learning stuff, that's good. Did he just put you in charge of governing already? Then he made a prayer, nice. Fit for office, okay that's good. Um, any buildings that are finished? Let's see, hostilities cease between those two Muslim factions, okay. That's good. Uh, cost of campaigning abroad are not shown in the financial panel. Money is deducted directly from the treasury. Okay. Uh, each general has a trait describing current morale of the troops. If they have been rested for some time, they are likely to be ready for action. If the general is a good commander, they may even be eager to fight. Once the army moves, it will start losing morale. So we don't want to be marching constantly. Okay, that's good to know. And that, of course, the credits. I mean, big up to all those people making a massive mod like this work. I wish I could thank you all personally, but I'm just going to have to scroll through it like that. There we go. There might even be some familiar names in there. Uh, nope. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know that many Maurers. And most of the Maurers I know are, of course, in Third Age Total War. Makes sense, makes sense. Alright, how about you move towards Venetia? Um, yeah, I, I struggle with turtling, as you can probably tell. I'm also going to pop down some watchtowers, because I don't know, there's rebels roaming my lands, and I don't know where, and it yes. scares me. Yes, Lord. I know watchtowers are ridiculously expensive, but so very worth it. I'm going to pop Lord. one down near the bridge as well. Bring they are worth the, the cash. Um, yeah, I don't know where those rebels are. There's rebels supposedly roaming all across my realm, but I have not a clue. I'm going to plop one here near the bridge. Invest all my money in watchtowers and 100% worth it. So much information. If I can get more, I will get more. Good. Now I have vision. And then Andronikos. I guess their troops are getting tired. Troops ready for action. Okay. Yeah, it's quite a long march, but... I guess I can have you rest in Nysos for a turn. And then we'll move towards Ragusa. I'm just kind of in the mood to expand, you know? Oh no, Dalmatia. Wait, is this a different territory? Yeah, yeah, Ragusa is a different territory. And Giorgio is not trying anything. You can call me Giorgio. Um, right, anything else I need to do? Building the church. I got a little bit of money left, but I'll just save it. What is this? Oh, a bride. Uh, sure. Doesn't really matter. I don't know why you need my approval. I'm not going to try to marry you off to that princess. She's way too young, mate. I know, I know. For the time, uh, 14 was a oof, ripe old age to get married, but it just feels wrong. <laughs> All right. I don't even know, like... If I have any princes that are ready to get married, I think I already married them off. I like the princess script of Medieval too, but there's always such a narrow window where you have an heir that's not married off, and then the other faction has a princess that's not married off, because typically they stay unmarried for like one turn, so it's always very small window. But those marriage alliances are always quite nice. A merchant's guild in Thessaloniki for 2k, I'll take that. Work on the mod continues. Yep, yeah, okay, so... This is not the definitive edition. More stuff is on the way. I'm not going to read through all that, but good to hear that it's still being developed. Send an emissary to Venetia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can read my mind, buddy. Oh, hello. Are you Venetian? Oh, you're from Pisa. I didn't even know that was a separate thingy, Magic. You want to trade? 
Everybody wants to treat. You're kind of blocking my path though, which is not nice. Uh, okay, I guess I'll go round, asshole. The, what is that, Monte Sibillini? No. The, what does that call in English? Apennines? Alright, so many things. New mission. Okay, end of turn reports. I'm losing my edge. I'm still number one in terms of production. And overall, I'm still number one, so I'm actually doing quite good. Resistance, my lord. The locals from this province are unhappy with our conquest. Yeah, where? Where? I don't, I don't know where. Is that still like these guys? That's Iskender the Scad. More captains. I guess it's these guys, but we're neutral to them, so... Is that just gonna stay happening? I guess it's gonna happen for a while longer. Okay, so now the Turks are expanding a bit. I don't know how he affords all this, but... Let's keep training our assassin, because I think we'll need him. Nice. He's becoming even better. Yeah, good, good, good. Alright, we have the Italian trader headquarters in Constantinople. Nice, that's gonna bring in some cash. Uh, what are these guys? I mean, they look cool. I like their shield design. But still, I'm more hungry for money. Money, money, money. A cathedral would be cool, I said. A pleasure palace? That's even cooler than a cathedral. Master Econos Studio. None of this brings me in money, so I'm just going to wait with it. Nassau's got the open pits. Nice. We'll go for the farms then. Alright. Adronikos, I'm going to let you rest in Triadica. You can chill there for the turn. Path blocked. Okay, so we got a dowry. Nice. That's the thing. Okay, the Pope does not like me all that much. I don't really care about the Pope, though. I'm not part of his religion thingy-mabob, so that's good. I don't trust the Turks, man. They keep expanding, they keep getting rebels, and they just have these big armies that just scare me. Also, I'm going to disband my Armenian heavy cavalry. I should have disbanded them years ago. Now, what does give me free upkeep? I need to get free upkeep. I guess it's only my castle that gives free upkeep. Two units. So if it's just a town, then no free upkeep, I guess. If I check, that's a castle as well. I have so many castles. That's all key, that's a city. Yeah, it does give me some free upkeep, not a whole lot. Okay, well. I hope the rebels cleared off these damn cumans. Curse them. I still don't trust Hungary as well, but don't want to get aggressive. Don't want to do it. Sebastiano, you better not. I mean, I can talk to you and complete my mission. That's good. Don't take Ragusa. Every <laughs> time I move, they just snatch the territory from under me. Like, that's so annoying. Because if that's the case, I will just wait a couple turns and then just go full on against uh, Selchuk's again. Barnaby wants to train more troops, but they're so expensive in their upkeep as well. I'll just kind of keep him in reserve. I will get an extra... Oh, I want to get an extra diplomat, but I'll get an extra merchant. This merchant is raking in big money for me. 1.2k and is a pretty shitty merchant, so... Alright. Alright, alright, alright. I just want to make sure that my bank account is looking healthier than my real-life bank account. Which is quite easy to achieve, I suppose, but still. It is a goal that we must push towards. I mean, I shouldn't be complaining too much, I suppose. I already start off as a very big realm, so... I already have enough settlements to manage, but... If you're just starting out and you're one of those smaller factions, like... Portugal, for example. And then you get punished so hard for expanding, like, oof. What do you do at that point? You just get overwhelmed by moors? That doesn't seem right. The Eldeguzit Atabigat. Oh, lord. So, Azerbaijan rose from the ashes of the vast Selchuk Empire in the beginning of the 12th century. The Atabek, literally Father Lord in Turkish, was the title of guardians appointed for minor princes of the Selchukit line who were nominally placed in charge of provincial garrisons. Okay, blah blah blah. In 1136, Sultan Masud appointed Shams ad-Din Eldegis to be an Atabek of Arslan Shah, his stepson and juvenile successor. What does all this mean? Blah blah blah. Under the Atabegs, Azerbaijan became a significant cultural center of the Turkic people. I don't care about them. 
I want to eradicate them more than anything. Costs of the kingdom. In the ship, most of the foreseen expenses for the coming turn are shown in the financial panel. This panel shows the income, blah blah blah. There are a few exceptional cases when the money will just disappear from your coffers without being listed in that panel. So at very hard difficulty, cost of a new general. So again, just again hammering down, you need to make sure that you keep some reserve. So we're always doing that. Cost of joining a crusade or jihad. Well, I can't do that because I'm not Christian. Nor am I Muslim. Okay, talk to Selchuks. What? I guess. For now. I'm happy I could... <laughs> Screw you, mate. I'll ask again next time, but don't bother me with those shitty offers. Could murder a Kievan minister. Alright, I need to find more targets. Oh my lord, I've become a hitman. I could sabotage buildings. Let's blow up the jewel square. A trusted subject brings to your ears disturbing news. Crooked and self-serving officials have been slowly skimming from your coffers. Oh no. Uh, ruler could not hold too much money without risk of it being stolen. So I can't have too much money either. Oh god, okay. <sighs> a player with a large treasury presents a constant temptation for this subject, and will therefore see some of that money simply disappear. The more he amasses, the bigger share he loses. As such, it is always better to spend that wealth on military operations, building activities, or supporting your diplomatic partners. Only building of certain financial establishments can increase the ceiling under which your treasury is safe. If you build a mint, the monetization of tax collection will present fewer opportunities for the crooks. If you build a bank, there will be more opportunities to tap into others' money, and financial liquidity in your kingdom will increase. Ah, oh, so now I'm having too much money this game. What do you want me to do? You want me to have money or not? I guess I'll spend it on a great harbor. That would bring in a lot of money, but... Is that really what I want to spend all my money on? I could also just improve stuff in more places than just... Constantinople. I have a thing for quarries, man. Quarries bring in the cash. I like them. Thessalonica. Maybe get roads there. 30 turns though, bloody hell. I, I'll start with a port, I suppose. An upgraded port. But maybe the river port. Yeah, I like the river port because that also improves my population growth. Um, Let's get farms. Don't attack me, Serbia, or with allies. I'm not too worried then. There's a large gathering here, which I really don't approve of, but I don't think anyone's asking for my opinion. I'll get that. And then I'm at 5k, which is always my goal. Alright, um... Wait, where is that general? Is that this guy? I thought I had an extra general. Uh, I guess not. Yeah, okay. Adronikos, Imerios. Let's Imerios. gather the troops. Yes. Let me strike, my lord. Because I want to move here. It's going to take a while. Yeah, three more turns to get to Ragusa, and I hope no one takes it by then. Let's talk to the Crusaders. You want to treat? I'm not sure why you speak French. Aren't you English at this point? I don't know. Again, history. I don't know. Uh, see, I still don't trust those Cubans. They're up to something, but... They seem to not be too aggressive at the moment or they would have put more troops in their settlement. And I guess they think the same of me. So there's just like this uneasy stalemate kind of. We're not at war, but we're also... I don't know. I think there should be some pretty decent gold mines here. Metals, 594, 338... What is this? 445? That's not bad, but I'm sure there's more. I'll move in this direction, though. We can start with that. You're probably quite bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go rest, go rest. Uh, still a bit too young, but... Keep aging. We'll get there eventually. Alright. Well, no more, uh... Rebel activities in Ankara, at the very least. You know what? I'll... Get the open pits as well. I know, I'm going below my typical... Reserve, but so far I haven't had a need for it, so I'll just take the risk just this once. Uh, okay, nice, more buildings. I think my economy is quite okay, all in all. 
But yeah, I, I don't have a war economy at the moment. I haven't been needing to train troops constantly in order to afford upkeep all the time. I've only expanded once. It's a relatively quiet first episode, but... As the Byzantine Empire, I do think that's quite necessary. And I quite like that we're doing a lot of campaign map stuff. Especially in the early game, the campaign map is my favourite side of the Total War game. But there will be, of course, much more war and bloodshed in the future. Tribute and other policy building. Some settlements begin the game with the tribute building. It gives additional growth of population and some happiness to this very settlement, but has a very bad impact on growth and even worse on happiness in every other settlement of the faction. Yeah, we've seen that. A wise ruler would build in this settlement alternative buildings conducive for growth and happiness, and dismantle the tribute building once the time is ripe. This gets more important as he conquers more provinces since the benefits of the building would stay the same while the adverse effects impact on each newly conquered settlement. Aha. Uh -huh. The tribute buildings are one of four policy type buildings in the ship together with the landowners, local autonomy, and gallows. These buildings may be temporary or de facto permanent. It all depends on the choice of the player. Yeah, I had the thought already of getting rid of the gallows in Ankara soon enough, but just want to wait a little bit. We really need that law bonus at the moment. I don't think I start with a tribute building, though I have no idea what it would look like. Local nobility? No. Yeah, I don't think I start with one of those tribute buildings. Wind and water mills. Oh, they look really nice. Uh, unless I'm missing something, then I think we're good. Alright. They're blocking the port. Name thy enemy, Lord. Let us move here. Men, Do I plop down an extra watchtower? Why not? These lands under your Serbia is my ally now, but oh, who knows, if they lose control of Ras, then my Lord. that might change. Hungary and Poland are at peace. Good. Lots of good stuff here. Anastasias Rauli. Ionis Adulterous. Oh, nice. So he's picking up some good traits. That's good. I really want to make him a good... Governor. I really need to, like, min-max in terms of, like, generals or family members, I guess I should say, that lead... Settlements and those that lead um, armies. For Ancient Guard, yeah, I want to get those. Really want to get those. Uh, well, let's murder some more people if possible, or destroy buildings, I guess. Am I taking down a person? Provincial Council already oh, half destroyed. Let's add insult to injury. Look like God himself has struck it down. Plotter, nice. Extra subterfuge. So, uh, how about that trade up? No, you're asking for even more money. Shut the hell up, pointless bickering. I'll give you a bicker. I see these Turks, man. They keep expanding fast. Actually, we're already near, like, the Crusader States. We're not that far off from them. I'm trading with them as we speak. That's Cyprus. Hmm. See, I'm thinking, should Cyprus be a castle? I think I can make a lot of money being a trade hub, so if I turn it into a town, I could probably expand my trade a lot more. Something to consider. I have a lot of castles. I'm not sure about that, though. Alright, well, let's expand our settlements. I think I'm building in most places, though. Uh, at the very least, Chandakas can definitely become a town. We don't need a castle there. How much does that cost? Not that much. So let's convert. I think I'm building in all my settlements then. Khersonas. Let's get the logging camps. This guy is getting old. I don't trust the humans, but I don't think they're going to attack me anytime soon. I think I need to prepare for more war with the Selchuks. I don't know where their armies went. They had some big armies that are just gone. Are they pushing in deeper into Cappadocia? I don't know. Yes, my lord. Naturally, my lord. I should probably f ah, <laughs> found them. <laughs> At the very least, this should slow down their... Ah, oh, they're expanding even further, taking so many settlements. But their economy should suffer from this massively. Naturally, Which settlement are you taking, buddy? I wish I could see. But, my lord, Can you see further? Hello? But of course. 
Yeah, no, we'll have to move round. Would I assassinate this guy? Yeah, but he's definitely taking more Solomon. So he's expanding so fast because he got all those troops for free, which is terribly annoying. So I should keep these guys healthy. We're going to have to call on them rather soon, perhaps. Okay, well, they're fresh. They're ready if need be. And I might pick up some Ranging Guard once I can get them, just because they're cool. These guys also look quite cool. They also raise morale of nearby troops. That's quite nice to have then. Okay, well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah, 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 okay. Don't trust the Turks. Never trust the Turks. But they're expanding fast, and I don't like that. I wish I could see my, my aggression thing if I'm gonna get punished for pushing towards Konya but right now I'm not pushing not yet not yet I want to take it slow and steady maybe get some more priests first so I can already start spreading the word of God I've reached my agent limit uh, in those settlements before I move in with the troops arts and minds and all that jazz you know okay well we're still reign supreme but not supreme enough. All right. So how long do I need to have you learning stuff? I don't know for sure. Because then I'll ship you back, and I think maybe even to Shersonas, because this guy is almost going to kick the bucket. 72 for this time period. Old geezer, man, I'm telling you. But at the very least, my economy is getting very healthy. So that is good. That is very good. And I was just taking a peek at my phone to see what time it was, because I think I'm already recording for like close to two hours, which is... But I, I want to record a little bit longer. I'm having so much fun, and I think a large part of it is also the fact that we haven't had that much action, and it's all just kind of brewing, cold water almost. There's enemies on all sides. All right, I'll read that in a moment. We cannot trust the Turks. I'll read that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. We cannot trust the Turks. We cannot trust the Cubans. They're up to something. Also, I really want to expand. Oh, they hold Squadron. I didn't realize there was a settlement in between. How did I miss that? I walked right past that. See, Ragusa is under siege by Sicily. So Sicily is becoming quite a big faction. Like, becoming quite a big deal. So I'd like to befriend them if possible. Do you want to be allies? I am afraid I must deny Okay, what if I give you a little bit of money? We shall listen, of course. Uh, just a small gift. I see no Something they like that. Useful. And then throw some money that way. 2k. How does that sound? We cannot okay, fine. I'll try it again soon. Very Come on, but yeah, this guy... <laughs> It's just been walking around, not achieving anything. Unless I'd go to war with Sicily, but then people are definitely going to find me uh, aggressive, etc, etc. So I might just... Oh god, we got a heretic. I might just get a boat and sail you towards Turkey then. You can definitely be useful for me there. Because a war with Turkey is inevitable. And then I can ship them to like here. And that would be easier for me. What is their name? Cool okay, well, it seems the other army failed to take Sision. But I don't like that they've got so many troops running around. Al Moravid Minister, can I kill him? 90%, yeah. Nice. He's getting better. He's almost maxed out. <laughs> oh, I love the spy subplot. Someone write me a story about Ariovindos Apofakafos Kokos. That guy. I almost died saying his name, so. A poisoner. Okay, uh, let's read through all the stuff that I skipped for now. Construction report. Let's do that first. Corinthos got the merchant's wharf. Nice. Big money. Let's upgrade the regular port. Ports are money. Smyrna got the quarries. Let's go for some. Oh, farms are bloody expensive. I also really want to get roads because they also are quite good, but 20 turns, man. So the quicker I start it, the quicker it's finished, I suppose. I'll just start with maybe the Merchant's Wharf for some population growth. Right. 
campaigning in foreign lands. Yeah, I know, I know. This man has just been wandering about aimlessly. Really not doing what I wanted to do. But I'll send them to Turkey. War is pretty much inevitable. Missing funds. Yeah, we know about that. So if I reach, I think, like, above 20k, they get angry. No more martial law in Angora. It's been two years your realm has expanded to yet another settlement. That one called Angora by some of its citizens. It became a normal part of your kingdom. From now on, there will be no martial law there, and the unrest of the burghers will swing in the same manner as in the other parts of the realm. Okay, so it's very much just become part of it. Um, if you manage to keep control of the settlement long enough, after a hundred years... Jeez. You'll get an information that it has been integrated and the unrest is only little higher than in the settlement traditionally belonging to your faction. All traces of being an alien will disappear after 250 years. If you lose the settlement, even to a rebellion, the whole process of integration will have to begin again from scratch. That's insane. That is actually insane. I'll still keep the gallows though, because we're only a little bit removed from total rebellion and war. Well, it is very much my goal to take all these Turkish settlements, but it seems the game wants me to chill. Ah. These are some rebels that are wandering around in my land, so if they come close enough, I will move out and kill them. Alright, Mr. Merchant Guy. Go to the mines. Spy. Well, I guess I can take these rebel lands without too much problem. So I'll do a quick scout, and that would also bring me closer to Kersonas. And then I can start my goal of completing the new Mare Nostrum, which is quite pathetic, but that is what it is. Okay, I think I can call it, it quits here then. One more turn. One, this is the final turn, I promise. I promise, and then I'll go to sleep. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with these Turks, man. I don't want them to become too strong either. I could have finished them off, and maybe I should have just swallowed the small debuff, but I don't know. That might prove to be more troublesome in the long run. I'll definitely need more generals and governors in the Turkish front, of course. They are going to declare war on me like that, as much as certain. Unless I marry into their family tree, but that also seems like a bad idea. A bride presented. You know what, I'm going to skip that for now, because maybe I should marry that princess. Royal Crowns. The crown system is designed for the higher campaign difficulties. Playing at medium, you may rather safely ignore it. At hard is worthwhile... Okay, so we need to get a crown. In the Middle Ages, the main factor preventing rulers from creating large empires was the disloyalty of their nobles at home, which forced leaders to divide their attention between conquest and the preservation of order. When the rich and powerful found themselves far away from the eyes of their overlord, they would often try to establish their own rule in the provinces. Proximity to their liege lord would generally prove sufficient to suppress these ambitions. In turn, the rulers needed legitimacy, preferably with God's blessing. One method of acquiring this legitimacy was a formal coronation. This phenomenon is reflected in the ship gameplay. A faction leader may acquire a crown, thereby giving him increased authority. The crown gives both direct benefits for the king and also boosts the general's loyalty in an indirect way. Uh, okay, so we need a crown faction leader. As a result, a good mid-game goal for the player is to attain the faction's crown. Furthermore, and maybe the most important, provinces exhibit additional unrest if the king is uncrowned. The provinces required for gaining your faction's crown can be found in the map in the faction panel while the other requirements are described in the ruler's relevant trait. There is also an easier way to have your ruler crown, namely having the trait Strong Legacy from his father. In this case, when the king's heir ascends the throne, he may be crowned even if this does not have sufficient personal qualities or rule over all required provinces. Okay, that's a lot of information again. So, I need to have all that. Oh, okay. Those are the settlements I start out with, right? Or are these the victory conditions? Is that the one I need for the crown? I think I need to hold the purple regions, so... I got that, I got this. And I need to have this sliver here. So we'll expand a bit too deep. And... Let's see... Do I need... I don't think I need Targo Viste. I think that's this one here. Okay, so what else do I need for my crown? You're 50 years old, that's a lot. Crown. Is he uncrowned? I would assume he's crowned. Uncrowned? Oh, he's okay. This man's role is far from a sure thing. Okay, to become the true king, he must get crowned. To achieve it, he needs to conquer all the lands his ancestors claim to rule over. See the map. He should have authority and piety of six or more. Authority, yes. Piety, no. 
He should not be either a regent or viewed as a usurper, and he should be physically and mentally fit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, his piety sucks, so what if I get the Orthodox Cathedral? That should increase his piety. Yes, let's do that. It's expensive, but... Damn it. Yes, Alright. Sail over yes, towards the Turks. Did they get their ass whooped at Sision? They did? That's a surprise. They're up to something. Right, let's torch some more settlements. I've reached the point where I have a 40% chance of killing a family member, so that's quite high. Can I just completely destroy this provincial council? That would be quite funny. Is he gone? <laughs> All these settlements... Yeah, this is 100% damaged. The jewel squad also 100% damaged. <laughs> this settlement's a mess, mate. Okay. Where is that rebel? He's still here. I can defeat you, but... Oh, I need to go... Oh, I can't cross here. Ah. I can't reach this place. And where is this rebel coming from? Yes, yes, I know you simply cannot do this. I'm thinking maybe move the troops and then borrow... Ioannis Aksushos. Because I want to leave my general in there. And I guess that would be the last battle for this episode. I will enjoy your land and women so, soon can the yes. infantry yes. reach? Just barely. But then he can move there. Please yes. tell me the infantry can reach him, yes. Uh, I mostly want to send in the cab, though. Yes. Just to make sure that they're not, like, without anyone in there. Um, do I, I keep my peltasts in the city? I can pick up a mercenary, I guess. I'll get the Balkan Archers, why not? I just don't want Mesut Ghazi to abuse the situation when I'm dealing with the rebellion. And he moves in and try and take Ankara. So I'm going to train some troops. Kontaratoi. Nothing fancy. But they get the job done. Could also maybe borrow Anastasios to help out. I mean, he's stuck in Constantinople learning. Maybe it's time he learns to fight as well. Is he even my heir? Because I've been putting so much effort into this guy, but I don't think he's my heir. Who is my heir? I should probably put a lot more effort into him. I don't know where he is. I have no idea where he is. I'll check that in a moment. Uh, oh, there's more rebels here as well. Seems rebellions are quite important for me to deal with. So maybe I should invest in an army. Oh, I'm one tire short. Okay, wait, I have an idea. If I get Anastasios in and I attack this guy from here, I should be able to bring in the other guys as reinforcements. Yes, yes that worked. I want to control them myself. Okay. This episode's already way too long, but I think it's going to be a fun way to round it off. What do you have? Ooh, you got horse archers. <laughs> That's going to be fun. But your troops are not that crazy. Okay, this will be an interesting fight. I definitely need reinforcements. We're going to join up with them. Face them on the battlefield. Kill them. Good practice for Anastasios. Let's see if he's also unintelligent on the battlefield. Oh, it's foggy. I'm going to wait. I don't want to deal with fog. There we are. Oh, Lord, the terrain. They definitely have a terrain advantage. But I'm going to wait for my reinforcements anyway. God, the terrain is crazy in this map. My troops are going to spend forever to get what I'm at. Alright, I'll make a jump cut because this is going to take forever. But I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, I tried to maneuver my troops to the high ground, but they were on to me and... They've outflanked me. They definitely had, well, the territory on their, in their advantage. So I'm going to have to strike and try to disable their archers because otherwise they're going to destroy my lines. 
So, definitely need to charge them in, as much as it pains me. Try to catch that cavalry. Okay, that's a good charge on their archers. Pull back now. Gotta give respect to their spears. Okay, well, they definitely can't blame my general for being a coward. Pull back. They have spears, which I don't like to see. Okay, good charge on their calf. Go back, General. I haven't spent all that money on your education only for you to die right now. I pray the course of this battle changes. What are you talking about? Defeat seems almost certain. What are you talking about, mate? You must be watching a different battle than I am. The only annoying part is my infantry has a hard time moving where I want them to move. But I'm catching their archers out in the open. So that's good. That infantry is zoning me out. My infantry is too slow on the hill. I get that. Okay. Careful, careful, careful. Let's see if we can give them a charge. Alright, alright, this is a mess. These rebels are proving to be uh, quite difficult to kill. I gotta give them some credit where it's due. But we will kill them in the end. Alright, we got them stuck. We should be able to charge now. Oi, oi. Oh, that's a really poor charge. That's not even a charge, mate. Pull back. see if we can destroy them. Okay, their morale is quite bad at the very least. That's good. Yeah, they're catching me. Come on, infantry. Do what you're being paid to do, kill. Let's see if we can give them a charge in the rear. I know it's not ideal. They're not really meant to do that, but... If they can... We might be able to route them. Okay, that's not working out. The scooter toy are being very annoying, but my calf can't charge for some reason. The terrain is really difficult. At least these guys are having a good time, just destroying those archers. For the moment, the fortune of battle goes out. More of that, please. The battle is in our favor. If we remain true and wholehearted, definitely want to see more of that. Is this a good? Yeah, this is a good charge. Got a fract. Wonderful charge. Another one. Right, let's see if we can catch that general. The one who's leading this petty little rebellion. I'm surprised they're not broken yet. Let's give them a charge. Oh, pull back. Shaken, but not stirred. Are uh, we looking here? Good charge. Seems like a good charge. We've caught their general with my heavy cavalry. That's perfect. They broke. Balkan archers doing what they need to do. Can't ask for anything else. Okay, trampling them. These guys should destroy those horse archers now that we've caught them, which is a surprise considering how slow we are. Okay, that's looking good, that's looking good. Catch them. Leave none life! Charge the scooter toy again, they will probably rout. Yeah, 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 he's struggling. Half the men are dead, good. Get those Toxotai. Are they broken? No. Close. Not quite. They're broken. Let's see if we can catch them. I love how they still try to do a charge, but they just couldn't. I like these Balkan arches. They're cool. I like them. They got funny hats. I like funny hats. Poor guys just came back into the battlefield. And immediately they turn around and they're like, nope. Don't want to deal with any of that. 
These cataphracts are hella slow, which makes sense. Historically. Alright, they all broke. Let's see if we can catch those prisoners. I'll make sure that these rebels never terrorize our land again. It's good experience for everyone involved, I suppose, but we will need some retraining done afterwards. Can we not catch some silly little archer boys? Our armies Praise the Almighty. There we go, boys. Let's put an end to this rebellion. Turkish pricks. I know they're Greek, but I'm sure the Turks are behind this. Considering how awful the terrain was, and I definitely learned that I need to take more of the terrain into account on the campaign map, I'd say this was a good win, all things considering. Pretty good results. Yes. And there we have it. Good. Now everyone can return to their stations. Now, Johannes, I'll keep you around for one more turn. So I can move them all back and then no one's out on the field. Well, that's going to be all for today. This episode's already way too long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I uh, hope you guys enjoy what I've got going at the moment, which will be probably one episode a week, but a bit longer. If you disagree and you're like, no, I want to see it like this or that, do let me know. Every and all feedback is much appreciated. So, yeah, that was it for episode one of our Byzantium campaign in Stainless Steel with the Historical Improvement Project. And I hope to catch you all on episode number two. Bye-bye, lads.